Good morning and welcome to series two of Message from the Mans. We are in lockdown once more, but hopefully only for the next three or four weeks. And if we are sensible and work hard over the coming days to keep the virus at bay, we will hopefully get a more relaxed Christmas. We've done it before and we can do it again. Let's begin this morning with a hymn. Sorry, got my buttons mixed up. But there's nothing wrong with the sentiment. The real hymn is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, you make the light shine out of darkness. You make the sun rise on bad and good alike. You give us Christ, the world's light. We wake our minds to think of you. You live in light beyond all light. Yet through Christ our Lord we know you. Present here in love and power, we lift our hearts to praise you. What is man that you should remember him, or mortal man that you should take care of him? Yet through our Lord Jesus Christ we know you care. In him you come not to judge us, but to forgive and set us free. We know that it is enough for us to face ourselves in your presence as honestly as we can, remembering how we have not cared, how we have been too much wrapped up in ourselves, too hard on others, too quick to blame, how we have grumbled when we should have been thankful, have criticised when we should have tried to help, how we forget the rest of the world, so long as we are all right ourselves. Lord Jesus, real light of the world, help us to admit such things now in your presence. Lord, help us to accept forgiveness from you and from others. Take away our pride. Open our eyes to your glory. Help us to live in its light. And may each of us help and strengthen the other, that together 
we may come to know and love and follow our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose words we now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from John's Gospel. It's a very familiar one. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing those who were ill. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for already he had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each of the ones to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About five thousand men were there. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Amen. The 30th of December is, of course, St Andrew's Day, the patron saint of Scotland. But what do we really know about St Andrew? St Andrew was also called St Andrew the Apostle, and he died some 30 to 40 years after Jesus in Greece. He was one of the Twelve Apostles, the brother of St Peter, and he is not only patron saint of Scotland, but Russia as well. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, Peter and Andrew whose Greek name really means manly, were called from their fishing by Jesus to follow him, promising that he would make them fishers of men. In the Gospel according to John, Andrew is the first apostle named, and he was also a disciple of John the Baptist before Jesus' call. A 4th century account reports his death by crucifixion, and late medieval writings describe the cross as X-shaped, He is iconographically represented with an X-shaped cross like that depicted on the Scottish flag. St Jerome records that Andrew's relics were taken from Patras in Greece to Constantinople, Istanbul, by command of the Roman Emperor Constantius II, around 357 AD. From there, the body was taken to Amalfi in Italy. St Andrew's links with Scotland come from the Pictish king Hungus I. According to legend, he built a monastery in the Fife town of Kirimund after the relics of the saint, said to include a tooth, kneecap, arm and finger bone, were brought to the town from Greece in the 8th century. The town became a major centre of pilgrimage and was later renamed St Andrew's, where our famous Scottish university now stands. St Andrew was made the patron saint of Scotland after the king's descendant, Hungus II, prayed to St Andrew's on the eve of a crucial battle against English warriors from Northumberland, around 20 miles from Edinburgh at Athol Stainford. Legend has it, heavily outnumbered, Hungus told St Andrew that he would become the patron saint of Scotland if he were granted victory. On the day of the battle, clouds are said to have formed a saltire in the sky and Hungus' army of Picts and Scots were victorious. The saltire flag, a white cross on a blue background, is said to have become, was said to have come from this divine intervention and has been used to represent Scotland since 1385. In 1870,
the Archbishop of Amalfi sent an apparent piece of the saint's shoulder blade to Scotland, where it has since been stored in St Mary's Cathedral in Edinburgh. Sadly, other relics were destroyed by the Scottish Reformation. But what about the man himself? Should we be proud to have Andrew as our patron saint? Well, the first thing to say about him is that he was a man who was searching for something, something to make sense of his life. Before he became a follower of Jesus, Andrew was a follower of John the Baptist. He was a man on a mission. He knew that something was missing in his life and he was determined to find out what it was. How we need that sense of calling, that determination, that drive today as we battle COVID and the other challenges that face us. Then there was the humility of the man. He could easily have felt that he was somehow special in that both Jesus and John had wanted him as a disciple and that he was one of the first, if not the first, disciple called by Jesus. But pride wasn't part of Andrew's makeup. And if you ever doubt that, remember that when he took Peter to meet Jesus, he was giving up any chance that he might have had of being a leader. Peter was one of those men that oozed leadership, who was naturally gifted to lead others. No one would have given Andrew a second look with Peter around. So if Andrew had had any thoughts about being Jesus' second in command, then he would never have introduced his big brother to him. But Andrew saw a bigger picture, and he knew not only would Jesus be good for Peter, but that Peter had much to offer Jesus in return. His humility is finally shown in the nature of his death. Jesus, Peter and Andrew were all crucified. When it was Peter's turn, he asked to be crucified upside down, because he felt he was not worthy to die in the same manner as Jesus. Andrew went a step further and asked to be crucified on an X-shaped cross, because he felt he wasn't worthy of dying in the same manner as Jesus, nor his brother. Is a patron saint who displays humility and sees the bigger picture a good example to follow? I think he is. And then there is what Andrew did as a follower of Jesus. In almost all the accounts where he is mentioned in the Bible, Andrew is involved in bringing people to meet Jesus. We've already mentioned that it was he who brought Peter to meet the Master. But there were other occasions as well. In John's Gospel, we find him bringing some Greeks to meet him. Initially, they had approached Philip, but he didn't know what to do. And so he went to Andrew, who immediately knew what had to happen. He took the Greeks to meet Jesus, and in doing so, showed the world that the good news of the Gospel is open to all who are seeking, no matter where they come from. There were some, even in the disciples, who felt that Jesus' message was only for the Jews, and certainly not for the likes of these Greeks. Andrew, in that short time he had been with Jesus, understood that Jesus wasn't just for the Jews, but for the whole world. Is having a patron saint who is all for being inclusive and welcoming a good thing? I think it is. The final episode in Andrew's life that I want to mention is the one we read earlier, the feeding of the 5,000. On this occasion, Andrew not only brings someone to meet Jesus, he gives Jesus the means by which he can create one of the most famous stories of all time. Picture the scene. Thousands upon thousands of followers scattered over the hillside, soaking up every word Jesus has spoken, and the sun is beginning to set. The people are hungry, with no way of satisfying that hunger. The disciples turn to Jesus, and horror of horrors, he tells them to feed them. You can imagine their distress. What can they possibly do? Enter Andrew, the eternal optimist, who discovers a little boy who has brought a packed lunch with him. It might well be a mere drop in the ocean of what is required, but Andrew does not dismiss him. He immediately takes him to Jesus, and the rest, as they say, is history. The crowd are fed, and there are twelve baskets of leftovers. Here we see Andrew as the positive thinker, always looking on the bright side, glass half full, everything as an opportunity. We also see him treating the little boy with tremendous respect. 
He could easily have dismissed him and sent him on his way. But Andrew knew that even the smallest offering, freely given to Jesus, can be turned into a miracle. And so he introduces the boy to Jesus and thousands are fed. Is having a patron saint who promotes positive thinking and encourages the little people as well as the important people a good thing? I think it is. As we move towards the season of Advent, we need more people like Andrew. People who are willing to be inclusive and welcoming, humble and able to see the bigger picture, positive and empathetic. Be proud of your patron saint and learn from his example. Let us pray. Lord our God, we believe your love to be broad enough to embrace the remotest need and deep enough to reach the bitterest heart. Hear us as we align ourselves with your compassion and pray for those we know to be in need today. For all who seek peace with justice in our world, where war rages or oppression reigns or violence threatens, where the poor are exploited, where industrial relations are at breaking point and where human rights are denied. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who through deprivation or unemployment can see little point or purpose in life, especially the young and the disabled, and for all with the power to help them if they would. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have dedicated their lives to you by the way they live and the work they do spreading the good news of Jesus among all men, women and children on earth, for your church in every denomination, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all schools and universities, that true learning with compassion and imagination may be eagerly sought and easily found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For children everywhere, and for our families, friends and loved ones, wherever they may be, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear our prayer for all in whom trust has been placed, all to whom power is given, all for whom love is asked, all through whom wisdom is sought, and by all whom joy can come because of Jesus. All this we ask in his name. Amen. We close with, we are marching in the light of God.
now may grace, mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love now and evermore. Amen. Keep safe and God bless till next time.